Ah, so a few days ago, Netflix released their adaptation of Boku Dakiga Inai Much, or as a lot of people probably know it by Erased. Uh, so, is this the Christmas gift that no one asked for? No. Uh, so, when it comes to live action adaptations, there is obviously this distinct divide when it comes towards them. There's 90% of people would probably say that they fucking hate them, whereas, like, the rest will sort of like them because, let's face it, a lot of live action adaptations aren't amazing but for me when it comes to this adaptation i can i can honestly say that this is the best live action adaptation that i have ever seen and if you guys see it you will probably think the same too at least i'm i'm just guessing out there because i honestly think it is really good so when this thing was first announced i i i can't help it i i honestly just ignored it at first i thought it was going to be complete garbage even with the japanese cast because with a lot of japanese live action adaptations they're they're just pretty much garbage as well especially when it comes to like the acting i don't know if it's just me but like whenever you watch those adaptations they they tend to try and act like the anime counterparts which comes off just just really cringy and it just doesn't play well into the adaptation but with this series they didn't do that and it felt really like immersive to watch so a lot of that plays into just pretty much how it was made this series is a really well made series it's 12 episodes long so it's not a live action adaptation movie like the garbage that the erase movie was but it's it actually works out pretty well a lot of the episodes aren't even like to a certain length there's some that's like 24 minutes to about 30 minutes um which i think really helped play well into how the story was told the first off we got the color grading now when it comes to like the saddish or i guess lonesome parts of the story we get this like bluish grayish tint which it really does help sell that feeling of, of being alone and being isolated and then when we have these moments where uh we're supposed to feel i guess i guess like happier or like when there's moments of interaction between people because a big theme of this story is to not be alone so when satoru is in his household or with his friends and stuff we get more of a warmer color grading like it plays well into how you're supposed to feel during those scenes as well as there is a huge use of ambiance uh, sound throughout the series. Now there is there is music that plays out. There is a soundtrack for it. But I just felt like a lot of scenes heavily relied on ambiance to sell, I guess, that ominous dark tone that the series was trying to go for, considering the context of it. And using ambiance helped make it feel like uneasy. It felt like it felt you felt nervous while watching it, and helped sell the tension and the, I guess, suspense that you were supposed to be feeling throughout those scenes. And I think what helped play a big role in making this a really good live action adaptation is the acting. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of cringy acting, in my opinion, at least, sorry, that goes on with a lot of uh, Japanese live action adaptations. But in this one, the acting just felt solid, it felt whole, and really helped sell the performances. And some key performances I just want to point out are those of the actors for Satoru, Sachiko, and Kayo. Especially Satoru and Sachiko. Every time they have an interaction on screen, I couldn't help but feel really emotional and have this like kind of this warm feeling inside me because of because of the context of what happened beforehand, that being Sachiko being killed. And like seeing how like Satoru felt because of that and just how they talked together, it just it almost felt like they were a real mother and son. And it was I just thought their performances were amazing and I loved every time they came on screen. Um, Another one I want to give a praise to is Kaio's actress. Her role was really, really well sold throughout the show, and I thought her acting was just amazing, and I couldn't get enough of it. She really sold her personality of just being that person who just didn't want to deal with anything and really wanted to get out of her house really well. You couldn't help but feel like really bad for her, but like also feel really, I guess, happy for her when she finally does get friends and is able to leave her her family and i just loved every scene she was in um but that's not to say that like they they were the best out of the bunch i think everyone every one of the actors in the show played the roles really well and it really helped sell the story um as it is and again it's pretty much i guess i guess the groundwork or the base for what makes this show such a good adaptation of the manga this show was also really shot very well um the cinematography consisted of a lot of um close-ups for really intense moments but as well as these wide open shots of characters to i guess help sell that again the isolated uh i guess lonesome sadish dark feeling that the show is trying to is trying to give 
And not only that, but there was also a lot of slow motion throughout the show, which helped build that tension and suspense you were supposed to be feeling. Like, for example, um, there's a scene, there's a scene, there's a scene where uh, Kyle's in the bus. Um, I think this was also in the anime where the killer comes in, or a kidnapper killer, yeah, uh, it comes in and pretty much just rages because you know Kyle's not at the storehouse. But like in the beginning and the end of that scene, he c walks towards the bus and it's in slow motion, and all you hear is just those heavy footsteps of the boots uh, impacting onto the snow. And I think it really helped sell that tension. And I. I personally loved every time there was a slow motion moment because you could you feel that uneasiness as you were watching it which i think really helped the series because in my opinion there was a lot of moments where i guess it felt anticlimactic um like we would build up to this resolution such as when satoru finds his, finds out his memories um the, the conversation on the bridge at the very end where like it felt like it was supposed to be like this dramatic conclusion but a lot of the times because of the lack of music again there was a lot of lack of music during those scenes it would build up a little bit but the way they resolved it just didn't feel i guess as impactful as i wanted um i don't know if some of you will probably feel the same way but if you watch the show you'll you might get what i'm saying and i don't know if it's just me but i was a bit confused because throughout the throughout the show there are a lot of transition scenes using i guess like this factory area where they'd have like the chimney puffing out smoke and that shot occurred multiple times throughout the shows but i don't know if they were trying to go for like a motif or something it didn't really make sense at least that maybe i'm just reading too much into it but if, if there is a d deeper meaning into it if like at all then be sure to leave a comment down below telling me what it is so something that felt a bit i guess different is the teacher in in this show uh, as we all know is the villain felt i guess had this more like creepy personality to him compared to like the anime for instance where i don't know he just felt more calm and collected in that show but then in this adaptation he just came up more creepy is is one way i can put it so i don't know i i prefer the more calm and collected version of yashiro in the anime but that's just me in this adaptation, we also get more of Yashiro's backstory concerning the stuff that happened with his brother, um, which I think helped sell more of like the motive of like why he was doing things. In the anime, you kind of get a, a sense of it, but I felt like it was more grounded here and that we could actually tell why he was doing the things he was doing because of, of the more of, because of the backstory that we were given. But again, in this adaptation, I, I think they still retain the fact that the killer is just it's just too obvious um there isn't that many suspects to really choose from and so like pretty much early on you 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 know who the killer is gonna be you know who the kidnapper is um but i don't know i guess i guess it kind of works and it doesn't like for instance i guess you could see it as like oh you know who it is but it's kind of like you're kind of nervous of what he's gonna do uh, now that you know but i also think that the way they they shot yashiro's scenes pretty much just put it out there saying oh this guy is the kidnapper so i felt like if they hadn't spent a bit like too much screen time on him or like shot it a different way and i think from there people could pretty much see that oh this this guy is probably the kidnapper he just seems like bad news um so i don't know maybe if they had like shot it a different way maybe if they had hadn't focused too much screen time on him and really gave us more i guess people to choose from to be like oh maybe he's the killer or something i guess it would have played into a more i guess compelling mystery of of who the kidnapper was so i i think that's one part that both adaptations needed to work on but what can we help it? it's, it's like that in the manga as well you pretty much know early on who it is now of course with adaptations there's always going to be some differences concerning the source material and the adaptation itself but there are some of which in the erase that i kind of preferred would have been kept in or at least uh worked on a little bit more uh one of which being the just kidding motif from satoru's mom which helped satoru figure out if she was lying or telling the truth uh th there is one instance of it in the series near the end but it just felt like oh it was there but like it didn't really have that much of a bigger role and then even a, a small detail that was added into the adaptation itself was the the i guess foreshadowing of the mom uh remembering to lock the door so in the manga it pretty much just happens as satoru walks in on his dead mom and he's like oh uh, remember this isn't hokkaido you should lock the door but early on into the series uh satoru actually says oh you should lock the door because this isn't hokkaido but later on of course she doesn't lock the door and that leads to her being killed and i think it's just that little small detail of just changing that little bit that like kind of helps 
I guess sell overall that this is really well made that they took careful I guess action in making this a good adaptation and this is just me being nitpicky at this point but a lot of Satoru and like a lot of other characters internal monologue was I guess shortened or cut off uh, there's a lot of monologue in the manga of how Satoru actually deducts the information and puts all the pieces together we still get that in the adaptation but I feel like it's just it's just dumbed down a little bit more in this in this series another drastic change in this adaptation compared to the manga and even the anime is that Iris' house doesn't catch on fire rather she has an apartment that she lives in by herself and the kidnapper attacks her while she's packing stuff for Satoru so in my opinion i think this played out better in the adaptation than the manga and in, in the anime as Irie is fighting with the kidnapper she's actually face to face with him so he, she actually like got to see who it is whereas in the manga she pretty much just sees her house on fire and then later says oh i know who it is even though we didn't really get to see her uh come face to face with him in the fire um another thing that's i think a little bit better explained with it is that in the manga satoru just shows up at her house when it catches on fire but in the adaptation it satoru has iris phone and sees the message from the kidnapper that he's coming over and so i guess that's what provokes him to actually go and check out her house whereas i don't know just he just shows up at the house without any kind of motivation where he was just sitting at the bridge waiting for her it's like oh i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go over and check anyways whereas this one you really have an actual motivation so it's just those small changes that i can i really appreciate that they included that really helped sell the overall experience of viewing of viewing the series like i actually really recommend it. it is it's well made it's well acted of course and of course not every live action adaptation is going to be perfect i mean we can only hope but this is pretty much as close to perfect as i think we're gonna get this is how a live action should be made it should be well cared for taking with extreme caution as to how to take that source material and put it into a different sort of medium i guess in the case with erase we get a full-fledged 12 episode series that explores the entire content of the manga without really removing details or changing or drastically changing anything in the story and so that's my personal opinion i think this series was really well made it's the best live action i've seen so far i really can't give this series enough praise i highly recommend you go check it out for yourself and let me know what you think uh do you think that this is a really good adaptation do you think it's probably the best one we've seen so far or do you think it's mediocre at best or just it's, it's just plain shit uh leave a comment down below letting me know what you think and until then have a nice day